Lab with you here in the morning. Nope, no wine. We're doing coffee today. So I got up this morning and I thought to myself, what should I work on? I thought, ah, how about that realistic STA65B that needs a dial cord installed? So here we go, another fine episode of Solid State Cinema. Here she is, the realistic STA65B solid state receiver with the following problems. Broken speaker switch shaft. That's a real issue because I highly doubt that I have anything like it. The dial lamps, which are hidden over here and over here, are burned out. That's an easy fix. But the main problem is, go to the inside, the dial cord. If you look right over here, there she is going around the flywheel, it's about ready to break. So when you try to tune it, the needle barely moves. I don't want to mess with it because I don't want it to break. So I haven't done one of these dial cord repairs in a long time and it's a little perplexing. I really don't know where to start. So I'm thinking about seeking some assistance. How about solid state sissy? That's a great idea. Let's see what she has to offer. By the way, did you just get up? Yes. Me too. Where's your coffee? I don't drink coffee. Oh! I'm so little, I don't drink coffee. I gotcha. Okay, let me show you what I got here, okay? Well, this is complicated, sissy. Where should I start? Duh, why don't you make a sketch? That's a great idea! All right, well, I was in the basement and I found this parachute cord. It's a little bit thick, but I think it will work. What do you think? Why don't you use this fishing line? Really? What is that? Huh, it looks like a black cord. It almost looks just like the dial cord. You're brilliant. So normally, this is not a task that I would do in the shop, simply because of the value of the unit and its age. However, as you saw, I did get some assistance from Solid State Sissy, and she talked me into it. But the real reason is, is the guy's local, he's cool, and he really loves this old receiver. So I thought, what the heck, let's take her on. So here we go. So here's the dial cord routing in the realistic receiver. She takes off across here, grabs hold of the tuning needle, another pulley there, does a right turn to the tuning cap, and there's a little idler pulley behind it. Where the problem is, though, is right behind the flywheel. If you look down there, you can see a lot of fraying. There's a lot of shrapnel laying under it. It's just wore out. So if you try to turn this, no needle movement. She's slipping really bad. But I don't want to interrupt this because I don't want it to break. So while it was intact, I made this fine sketch. Okay, So I know how many turns were around the main pulley, how many turns are on the flywheel, okay? So hopefully with that information and my trusty dial cord, which is the right size for this job, we'll be able to replace it. So right here is the tensioning device to keep that cord nice and taut so you develop enough torque to tune the cap, okay? Now one thing you always want to do before you do one of these tasks is make sure that this tuning cap moves, okay? Because if that guy's locked up, you might as well stop because you're going to put on the new cord and it's not going to work, all right? And there's no way to fix these things. Pretty much when they lock up, it's curtains. Another tip, if you're not good at sketching, use a camera. Get some pictures of that stuff, all right? Because you can always delete the pictures when you're done. But it's good to keep a record of what's going on. Recommended tools for the job, obviously a dental pick and maybe some long nose pliers because you're going to have to do a little bit of brain surgery. I always start with taking the spring off of the tuning pulley, then I'm going to remove this cord and measure its length and then cut the new one obviously a little bit longer because when we get all done, we're right back in here, we're going to tie it and retension it. So I have the retaining spring off of this little tab on the pulley. You gotta be careful. They put glue on that and it really holds it. And if you take something, just pry it, you're gonna break that tab. And if you do, you're hosed, all right? So take your time, get that baby off. 
And now I'm at that point of no return. I got to pull off this string and get her measured. So you can see I have not had to cut this string, okay? You just kind of get him unlaced out of there. The only other piece of advice I have is don't take this all apart and come back in a week and do it. Do it like on the spot while you still have this fresh in your mind where you're going to have a disaster on your hands, all right? So let's get her tore down. So here's a tuning needle. They use more of that stupid glue, okay? So take an X-Acto, get under there, pry up these tabs, and carefully get that string out of there. You don't want to damage this either. So here it is. The dial cord's removed, okay? Still got the spring there. And over here, I went ahead and cut it where the bad areas were around that pulley. Now I'm going to measure this, cut the new black cord, and get her restrung. So before you put the dial cord in, you should get in here and clean these surfaces. There's all kinds of crap in there from the old cord. Okay. Take a Q-tip with some alcohol, clean this, and then you hear this? She's rough, needs to be lubed. This is a great time to get in here, lube this back up so that she'll tune nice and easy when you're done. So when you lube this, make sure that you don't get it on the surface where the dial cord string will be, or you'll contaminate the dial cord, right? And then it's going to fail prematurely. Anyway, get your lube in there, and look at there. Right back to maybe close to new. So per my fine sketch here, You'll see the three turns going around the pulley. This is viewed from the front. That's the rear. So I have that in. And I'm up and over the first little idler pulley. And I've got the cord pulled back. So now I'm going to string the rest of the unit. So here's a progress report. We're around the pulley. Around the idler. She's routed all the way down and across. I know it's kind of hard to see. We're on this pulley and the bottom pulley, and we're ready now to hook up to the main tuning cap. Now the thing I wanted to point out is, if you need an extra hand at any time when you do this, use some electrical tape to keep tension on cables, because if one of these let go when you're doing it, it's going to fall off on everything you've already accomplished and you're going to get pissed. Okay, so mission accomplished. New dial cords installed, all strung. Good to go. Tension springs in there. Now, when I tune the old flywheel, you'll see that's moving nicely. Let's take a look at the dial. Doing its thing. Full sweep. A very enjoyable project. I highly recommend it. So it's a wrap. The old dial cord's in, and the receiver is working again. Maybe for another 10 years. I don't know. But I'd venture to say this is the last service that that little receiver will ever see. It makes me appreciate the fact that tube amps don't have dial cords. That's what Solid State Cinema is all about, for me to share the love. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you. Well, that wasn't bad at all. What was I worried about? It's simply Solid State, sissy. I thought you were the sissy. Ha ha ha. <laughs>